Hi BDA family, it's Cheryl from Bright Days Ahead and today we want to review some items that help make full-time living in an RV much easier. Now you've seen a lot of YouTubes, you probably have already watched some right now about full-time or RV gear. So this is not going to be that. It's not going to review hoses or water pressure regulators or dump hoses or any of those things. These are going to be items that if you are a full-time family, it just makes living in an RV either easier, homier. Um, we're going to talk about a few cleaning items. And so you may not be full-time, but maybe you're going for an extended trip or the summer, or maybe your grandparents that you're going to have kids over. So all these items are to help you full-time keep your family running in an RV. Okay, all the things that we're gonna show you are also really cost effective. I think there's only a few things that we're gonna show you that's priced over $25. And you're gonna see some stuff that I don't think you've seen on any channel before. But the first thing I wanna show you is my favorite. And I don't know if people talk about it a lot. And that's my washing machine. It's not that I love doing laundry, I really don't. But I think this is the number one item in here that has really made the transition from living in a house or sticks and bricks into the road the easiest for us. Now, you definitely do not have to get one. I know a lot of people that don't and they go to the laundry mats and most campgrounds do have one. Um, but this is where it has just made it not, I don't want to say a struggle, but it just made it easier. I still have young kids, so we have potty accidents or we wear lots of clothes during the day because we're playing dress up or we just get dirty. The little girls like dirt too, and so they play in dirt. And so I keep this thing running. I do about a load or two a day. And so that's really made the difference. One, I'm not getting laundry stacked up everywhere. So I, you know, I do the laundry and then I fold it and put it away. So you're cutting down on clutter. And then two is if I'm doing a load a day, it's not piling up and we're not having a huge chore or taking a whole day out where the whole family goes to the laundry mat and does all the laundry. So I'm not saying you have to have one, but it's really made it much easier for us in the transition. And let me show you what it is. It's a Splendy combo washer and dryer. So I actually did a load this morning. I stopped it in the dry cycle, but um, it is a Splendy. So this is a washer and a dryer. And I really did that because I didn't want to give up the extra room of where a dryer could. A dryer could go here. Now, you've probably seen reviews and said, Cheryl, I heard they don't work. This particular one is the Splendy 2100XC, and I will leave a link for it below so you can see it. But this is a vented combo. I know friends who have gotten the unvented because they just didn't want to cut a hole or something in um, their rig, but <clears throat> we've had really good luck with it. Couple tips, don't overfill it. I mean, just do small loads. But I can, at the same time, it doesn't have to be like four things. I've gotten a whole set of towels in there. I do my whole queen sheets as a load and I do um, some days I do like everything that we wore. So all four of us, all those clothes go in here. Um, and then let me show you a couple other things that you have to learn when you're in there. Between the washer and dry cycle, you know, sometimes you just have to, I don't want my shirt wrinkled. You know, I have to shake it out and then I'll put the clothes back in there and then I'll put it on dry cycle. So um, that might be a complaint you see is everything is like super wrinkled. A couple other laundry things that make life easier living in here. One is pods. Now I know these are not always the safest for kids around. I have the locking cap and I know that there's more natural options out there, but I would definitely get a pack of pods, even if this isn't your favorite detergent, um, because it's really easy if you do have to go to the laundry mat. Like, you know, I still wash a comforter or if a lot of towels or something, if something happens that I have to go to the laundry mat for some big stuff, the pods are so much easier. You can put it in a bag and you're not lugging like a big thing to the laundry mat. One of the things that I like are these dryer balls. I didn't really use them at home much, but they cut down on the static. And then when you stick them in here, it actually helps stuff dry a little faster. So that's a good tip. Um, and then I'll show you a couple other things. One is collapsible, anything collapsible. So this is a really great hamper that stores away and it's collapsible and it fits a lot of clothes in there. So I like that laundry hamper. And then these space saving hangers, not only are they space saving, but they're the velvet hangers. 
and um, we haven't had anything come off when we are driving. So not only can I get a bunch of clothes in there and it kind of stores away, but nothing falls off when you're driving and on your road trip. Okay, the next couple products have to do with the bathroom. And the first thing is, is this shower dispenser. Um, I don't know why we didn't have this in our sticks and bricks, but it holds three products, shampoo, conditioner, and shower gel. And we've kind of minimized where it's kind of all products for one, except for mom's special product over here. But now the next product, I promise you probably haven't seen it anywhere, anyone talk about it. And this is a stopper. And that's because we still have young kids and they want to take a bath. And in our shower pan, we have a good six, eight inches. And if I put the shower stop on here, they have a bath. They can play with our toys and they just have a great time in here. And it really has given us an opportunity to still give them baths and they're not missing out on anything. Something else we like, and you can use this at Sticks and Bricks, is like a shower cleaner. And this is a shower spray that you put on afterwards. And I don't want to say I've never cleaned my shower. I mean, maybe once or twice. But this really keeps, we don't get any mold or mildew, which is a huge concern in an RV. You don't have a lot of ventilation in here. And this keeps our shower really squeaky clean. You make some of your own. We've tried because we can't find this stuff sometimes where we go around vinegar. But definitely get something that you spray down your shower afterwards because you don't want any of that gook um, or, or mildew in your shower building up. Another thing that we got when we were full-timing, I was actually resistant against it, are these Turkish towels. Uh, we have regular towels, but I will tell you, they don't always dry fast, and these dry really fast, and then they can also, they're great to take to the beach because the sand comes right off of them, or to the pool. They fold up really nicely, and they're super light, and they're not bulky. So uh, it takes a little getting used to kind of using this towel because it's not your big fluffy terry cloth towel. But since we've changed to these, even John likes them and they dry super fast. Okay, so now for something icky. I think when people think about living in an RV, is it gonna be stinky? And I'm not gonna go into a lot of this. There's a lot of reviews on this, but this is my one RV thing that we really like. And it's called RV um, Organic Happy Camper and it's odor free. So if something stinks, like the toilet or the black tank, this thing has really stopped smells. We've been in over 100 degree heat and our black tank never smells. So I really recommend this product. And then just a good reminder, have a first aid kit because you are outside a lot. You are camping. There's lots of boo-boos and scrapes or you're hiking. So we have one for in the camper. We have one in the truck and we also have one in our go bag, whether it's to go hiking or to the pool, just because it happens a lot. So don't forget, get a nice size, you know, this is pretty um, small first aid kit and have on hand. All right, so when you're living full time, you don't want to feel like you're giving up at anything. And one of those things was I was a big cook at home and I want to make sure that I could still cook yummy meals. So I had a lot of spices and I needed to figure out how to store them. So we got a spice rack. There's lots of options. I've even seen like little magnets that you can put on the side of your refrigerator, but find something for you to hold all your spices so you don't have to feel like you're giving up anything or any of your yummy cooking. Now this is definitely not essential and I did not get on the bandwagon with the Instapot or the Ninja Foodie or anything until we came RV camping and I think it was just peer pressure. Everyone had one so I thought you had to have it when you're RVing. But I will tell you it's really helped. So this is the Ninja Foodie. So it's an Instapot, a slow cooker, an air fryer and it's a sauteer. And I will tell you I use this a lot especially if I didn't plan ahead on meals I can get something cooked fast or oftentimes you think you're going to grill outside and it's either too windy or rainy or something. I can put this on the grill saute section and I can do steaks or fish. And then there's other times my oven, <laughs> RV ovens, that's a whole nother subject. They're not always that reliable. And so this has given me something else to cook and it doesn't heat up the RV. Whether I use the convection oven or this oven, if it's super hot outside, sometimes it heats up the RV. So I've liked having this again, definitely not essential. And if you can't afford it, don't go right, run out and buy it but it has made living in an RV, it gives you more options to cook. It's been really great for our family. Now I wanna show you a few other things that help around the kitchen. Cause I have some really great storage, but you don't have a ton of storage. And that's anything and everything collapsible. So I'm gonna show you a couple. First is my dishwasher. Everyone's asked if I have a dishwasher. Yeah, sort of. Between John and this, this is my dishwasher. So it collapses down if I want to store it. It also fits right in here if you want to you know, use one side to wash. And I have 
The other one, I don't use this a lot. I thought I was going to. It's a cutting board and it could be a dish pan. So if you're boondocking and you're saving water to wash your dishes and then it can fit over in here. I didn't, I don't use it that way to, di to dishes because we're always hooked up. So I don't care about uh, saving water as much. But as far as cutting board, I did use it as the cutting board, but some of the stuff got in here. But if you're a big boondocker, this would be a great one for you to use. Um, and then there's all kinds of collapsible things. Let me show you. I have little collapsible colanders. So, you know, these are great um, to be used, but like, look at how they store down. And then, actually, I didn't, don't tell John this, I didn't really probably need it because here's my salad bowl spinner. And look at this thing. This is great. It can be used as a salad bowl or here is a colander. I didn't have to buy those. I could have just used this as my pasta colander. And then it's your salad, your salad bowl and your salad spinner. Uh, and then for Tupperware, I mean, you know your Tupperware drawer at home and your sticks and bricks is a disaster. Well, I didn't have room for that. So here are these little, and I have several of them. I think I have one more somewhere. And then they also collapse down. And so these are great. So in the kitchen, look for creative solutions like this that are collapsible and then look at all the space saving it does. Now I want to talk a little bit about decor. And this is not about remodeling because I'm not the best RV remodeling and there's a lot of Instagram pages out there for you to look at. But there are a few things that help you make your RV feel like a home. And behind my throw pillow, which that's also cozy, are a few of them. Anything command. I should buy stock. I mean, I have Velcro, I have little hooks and stuff. This really helps. That's how we have all these pictures hung, is all Velcro, command Velcro. And then I think I have a command hook here. I have some hooks over by the door for our hats or dog leashes. And then even these little shelves are command strips um, or command the brand. And so those little shelves are super cute. And then my decor that I keep on it, because you want a few things like little vases or something, and I don't want to have to move all these time. I use museum putty or molding putty, and this one's, I think, Loctite. And so you can get this, and you can see that little blue piece of gum, and we've had these up well over a year, um, and they have not moved. So Loctite, I have a bunch of stuff with Loctite, and this really helps with your decor items. And then a couple other things like super in effect, super cost effective, you know, not expensive is like, this is my kind of bent up roll, but shelf paper. And we've used shelf paper in a couple places on here on the door. This was glass. I didn't want the glass to be shown because it's kind of see-through. So to make it darker for the girls, since this is their bedroom door, we put it on there. We put it behind a little pop of color back there. We had some speakers and then when we did the sound bar, it had some holes. So to cover up those holes, I used that. And then I even used it, you know, shelf paper in, in here too, so it's easier to wipe out. So shelf paper, super handy, super inexpensive. I mean, they sell at Walmart, Target, anywhere. You can find some on Amazon. Um, that's super helpful. And then the final thing is, okay, you do want to remodel. One of the first things you can do is these peel and stick tiles. These are roommate stick tiles and we have them. We have a little bit of backsplash at our oven and John put some in our bathroom and they come in all colors, shapes and sizes. And it's super easy. They just peel and stick and then they have like a little plastic coating on them so you can wipe them clean like in our bathroom. They get toothpaste or something on them. And these have been great in a super easy way that you can, you know, make your RV feel a little like home. Okay, so when you're a full-time RVer, this is your home, so you gotta clean it just like anywhere else. And I wanna show you a couple cleaning tools that have really helped us. And this is where I'm gonna get controversial. So please do not send me hate mail. But I do not think you need a Dyson. I think this is where you can save a lot of money. And if you look at all the Facebook pages and you ask any woman in an RV, she'll say, go out and buy a Dyson. Now what I'm about to say, I have a dog that does not shed, so I do not have a lot of pet fur to contend with, so I don't have that problem. If you have a pet that sheds, then you may have to come up with another solution. Let me show you what I do instead. There are so many nooks and crannies in here, it's really hard to get a vacuum head in all those areas. So this is your biggest friend, just the plain old broom. But sometimes you need a little bit more suction power 
And I have found, again, not going to be popular, but just a simple handheld vac. It picks up, you know, quick messes. It can, this one has a little attachment that has a little burn feature and it gets in some of those nooks and crannies a little bit. We don't have a lot of carpet in here. We just have a little carpet in there and this even helps me in the carpet area. And then if I need a stronger vac, especially if you saw our YouTube on when we had a little bit of a mess in our RV, um, John has a small shop vac, so I'll show you that outside. But between, you know, the broom, this handheld and the shop vac, I feel like that's all you need. And what's the beauty is this stores away in a cabinet, the shop vac stores away in the basement, and then I'm not having to find where do I store that big Dyson or Shark vacuum or any of those bigger vacuums. And then Command Strips even makes a broom holder. We can show you a picture of that in the girls' bathroom. And we just tuck these away. And then when it comes to the mop, I've really liked this mop. Um, what is it called? Oh, Cedar Mop. I will put a link for it because you can put your own cleaning product, like even just hot water or vinegar in it. And then this microfiber can be washed in my washing machine that I have. And what we like about this microfiber is if your floor doesn't need to be swept, like maybe it's just a quick cleanup, this also picks up a bunch of stuff too. So those are a couple quick as far as the floors cleaning solutions. Okay, let me show you a couple cleaning products that we like. And these cleaning products are definitely dual purpose, meaning that they do multiple cleans, either inside or out. And they're definitely not the most natural, and I'm sure there's a lot of natural solutions. But these are two that we really like, that we found. One is Easy Off Cleaner Degreaser. So this is great for cleaning my stove, like if I cook bacon on here and it splatters everywhere, this really cuts the bacon grease. But then John's used it outside, like after we are on travel day or something, there can be like road grime or tar that gets um, thrown up on the front of the rig. And this really breaks down that heavy degreasing or it cleans the grill outside. So anything like a heavy duty, like degreasing agent, this is, it's relatively mild. It doesn't do anything to our hands. It doesn't smell really bad. And it's just really works and is very effective. And we really like it. All right, our next product we've liked so much that we actually ran out of it. And that is the Dawn Foam. I don't know if you've seen it. There's a little itty bitty picture. It's the Dawn Foam. It just came out last year and then with COVID, it's been really hard to find. This is the refill of it. But I love this for a couple reasons. For you boondockers, you might really like it too. I took a pan of cheesy potatoes and just sprayed this on and let it sit. And then all you have to do is basically wipe it out with a paper towel and then maybe give it a quick rinse. This thing, it's like a dishwasher in a bottle, which I do love. But then regular Dawn is really great for washing your dishes um, because they get super sticky and you know, you're, you're doing manual washing, which is not that big of a deal. But then we use the hot soapy water. This is great for cleaning your gray tanks. So even afterwards, we put a little bit of Dawn on travel days and some hot water and it keeps our gray tank squeaky clean. Okay, and to wrap up, we're gonna finish up outside on a few things as a full-time family that makes your life and transition into an RV a little easier. And one of the first things is this little shop vac. Isn't it cute? We got this little shop vac, I think at Harbor Freight. And not only is it like, if you need a little bit more powerful vacuum on the inside, um, it has a couple of the crevice tools so I can really get like underneath the slide if I need to. Um, but you could also, in a pinch, you could use this as a leaf blower to maybe blow off your mat or something like that. And there's just tons of messes. Like I like to use this on the stairs when we put the stairs away. And look at how easy and compact it is. So it just sticks in our basement door and it's not a big deal. Uh, we already talked about the degreaser. John uses it outside. But we get asked a lot by campers in the campground, how come our rig still looks brand new? And I swear it's this. This is a clean and protect spray on waterless wash and wax. So it kind of does it all. So he just sprays this on, kind of lets it sit, and then he wipes it off with a microfiber and keeps your rig looking clean and new. All right, so shoes is a huge issue. What do you do with shoes? And I don't know if this is the right solution, but this is what we do and that we've liked. Um, and that's just a tub and we throw all our shoes in here but it's also a couple of the other things like we have our dog tie off in here so if you have a dog it's important that you get like a dog tie off it's a really long like 10 foot leash so he can be out here with us um, but he's not loose in the campground so that's a requirement but that helps it seals up and it keeps it away from the rain and stuff and so I call it my mud room another thing is 
hey, you have to have a map to brag where you've been. So as you can see, we're filling in some of our states. Our next state I think we're gonna get is Nevada, and then we're gonna go up to Oregon and Washington to get a couple of those. But get a state map, I'll put a link on them. There's a lot of fun ones, but I'll show you this one. I like it because we've actually been to some of these places like San Antonio and White Sands. So you gotta have a state map. Okay, so another one of the things that I'm gonna show you is what I'm standing on this outdoor mat. Um, not every campground is gonna be as beautiful as this one with concrete pad and grass. They normally are dirt or rock or whatever, a lot of, lot dirtier options. And I would get a mat because we actually only bought one and then now we have two. Because you want to create a space for the kids to play outside and not be tracking all that in. So as whatever you can do to keep all that dirt outside or keep that dirt down. So the mats really help. And then get you a really good sweeper mat like this. You're trying to keep as much dirt outside from not coming into your rig. So that's something. And then this, again, this campground is so nice. Look at this picnic table. One, it's huge. Um, but what we normally have is, and I just only pulled this out as an example, is get you a tablecloth cover that has like either a gathering or string so it doesn't blow away. And then we really like the ones that come with not just the tablecloth, but these are bench covers. So I'll put a link for this, but not every tablecloth or a picnic table is as nice as this, and some of them can get splintery. So having something for both the bench and the tablecloth, and it's not blowing off in the wind, is a big thing when you're a full-time family. And, you know, this is a part of your dining room. All right, now I guarantee you've not seen this on any other channel. What? You don't have a blow-up unicorn pool? But we ended up getting this just because sometimes you do go to a campground like this one that's beautiful and it has a marina and we're, we're in Stockton off the River Delta and I have a channel back there and it's really nice, but it doesn't have a playground or a pool. So how are you going to keep those kids entertained? And this is a simple solution. Um, our little unicorn blows up. We use our Viar air compressor. I think we showed it a couple times on our tire videos. But um, we can blow this up and the kids played out here for four hours, just playing in the pool with our toys and stuff. We ask permission, not every campground allows it, so just make sure yours does. But it's a simple solution that packs away really compactly and it keeps the kids busy. So that's about it. Well, besides my new moon chairs that I like, but I hope we gave you a lot of solutions of things that helps you make full-time living in RV really simple. So. Don't forget to subscribe and like our channel, please. We really appreciate everybody that watches. And until we see you again or on the road, bye and have some bright days ahead.